In terms of what we're seeing with the airports right now, we've started to hear some commentary, some lost revenue from the airlines. Uh, a lot of number crunching right now on whether uh, some of the economic impact from this will be made up in the second quarter. Where will that happen? Where will it not happen? Well, it won't happen for business that didn't ha happen because somebody couldn't get on a flight because the flight was cancelled. You know, that business could be lost forever. It's going to be lost forever if you've been relying on, on custom from federal government employees. You know, just if you're a restaurant that gets a lot of custom from federal government employees, you know, they're not eating now and they're probably not going to eat twice as much if they get back to work in the second quarter. So some of these losses will never be recovered. And, and to make emphasize the point that was made earlier, you know, as the shutdown goes on, these effects get bigger and they metastasize and they spread through the economy. So, you know, a 30-day shutdown is three times longer than a 10-day shutdown, but it's more than three times worse for the economy because of these snowballing effects and the ripples that we get through the system. And the deeper we get into those problems in the system, the longer it will take to unwind them and the greater will be the stuff that's lost forever. So it's not simply a case of saying, well, another day, another week, you know, it's, it's no big deal. It actually is becoming quite a big deal. And thankfully, I think that the airport chaos is going to get the attention of politicians very, very quickly. I can, in some ways, this is what we, we've been waiting for in order to get them to move because this is becoming unconscionable and it, it's, uh, it's really starting to dig into the meat of the economy now. And Steve, we're certainly in uncharted territory, 35 days in on this partial government, government shutdown. We've been at a record for, what, over a week now. Um, what is there anything in, in recent history that we could compare this to in terms of yeah. what this economic impact could look like? I have a theory cooking that maybe we look at it as severe weather impacts exactly. uh, in We've previous been, quarters. Exactly. Talking about that. Well, I, I didn't know if you had me on because of my economic expertise or because I go to LaGuardia once a week. And the first thing I want to say, Morgan, if I will, if, if you if you wouldn't mind, is that uh, thanks to all the FAA and TSA employees who have been coming to work without a paycheck uh, and, and a ground stop at LaGuardia is kind of like normal operating procedure it happens all the time you get weather stuff like that so today is not a big deal but picking up on what phil lebeau and what ian said over time it gets to be a big deal and the business is not recouped and i think you're exactly right morgan about thinking about this as a storm but of course the storm is man-made you remember a couple of weeks ago i came on air and i read the statement from the federal reserve asking lenders to uh, be kind to borrowers who might be affected by the shutdown it was pretty much the exact statement that all the regulators uh, give after a hurricane. So they're thinking about it that way. The trouble is you don't have the offsetting building going on, right? You have the destruction of property in a hurricane, and then you have the offsetting uh, uh, positive side of the rebuilding. There is no po offsetting side here to this. And Steve just mentioned the Federal Reserve. Given the fact that it's taken the stance of being data dependent, some of that data has been missing through this shutdown, given the fact that there are a lot of question marks about ultimately how much this shutdown could affect the economy here in the U.S., what would you expect it to do in terms of shaping Fed policy, at least in the near term? Uh, Morgan, I'm afraid the audio has, has gone uh, rather messy, but I think you're asking me about the ultimate impact on, on the economy. Stop me if, if that's wrong. Um, I think first quarter growth, if the, if the shutdown continues through the end of March, is going to be close to zero. I see Kevin Hassett from the White House uh, said that earlier this week as well. Um, and although I think there will be a rebound in the second quarter, it's probably not going to recover anything like all the losses. And so we're going to have a weak first half coupled with the trade war with China and the slowdown in global manufacturing. This is a really a messy, a messy situation. And as Steve said earlier, it's, uh, the U.S. bit of it, the shutdown bit of it, is entirely man-made. There's an obvious way out of it. Um, but because of Trump's obsession with the wall, we're not taking that way out. And so we've got what looks like a, a stalemate. But you know, this is doing serious damage now. And uh, I, you know, I can easily see it's entirely possible that if it, if it carries on through the end of March, uh, the economy, not just not growing, it, it might even contract for a while, which is the, the last thing that we need, and it certainly wouldn't be happening without the shutdown. And Steve, I'll put the question to you. In terms of the impacts this could have on Fed policy, at least in the near term, how would you expect that to shape that? So um, I think the phrase you might use is flying blind, right? So if, if that happens uh, at an airport, they ground the planes. Unfortunately, the Fed has to keep flying 
all the time, and they have to keep making decisions. And I think what's happening is they're uh, relying on alternative uh, sources of data and information about the economy. We're still getting jobless claims. We're still going to get the jobs report. We're not going to get the GDP report. I think that uh, uh, Powell, uh, Chairman Powell gave us a kind of way to, to see through. He said, when you walk into a room and it's dark, you go slowly. And I think that's what the Fed is going to do. It's going to be patient. I don't think there's a big risk that it's making a mistake, for example, that inflation is gathering uh, and the economy uh, is, is running too hot, and so the Fed has to be hiking. I don't think that danger exists. The danger, if it does exist, is to the downside, and the Fed, I think, is still pretty easy uh, at this moment. So it's a position for near-term weakness, whether or not it has to worry about longer-term weakness. That's the story we're missing from the missing data.